Back in 2020, I made two videos back to back about Devil May Cry 5's dual main characters, Dante and Nero. Virgil is obviously the guy who needs profiling next, as he's one of Devil May Cry's most popular characters and iconic villains. He's synonymous with lead character Dante's backstory and has had a deep range of appearances across the series too. Like Dante, Virgil's origin also spurs from Italian poet, writer and philosopher Dante Alighieri's narrative poem, The Divine Comedy. Here, Virgil, with an eye, no, 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 not that Virgil, acted as a guide to protagonist Dante, displaying all of the noble virtues attributed to the perfect Roman as they descended into the inferno of hell. This is quite the opposite to Devil May Cry's character, who is as antagonistic as they come. The antithesis to his brother Dante, Virgil is quiet, calculating, and power crazed, keen to embrace his demonic nature if it means reaching his full potential. A sharp contrast to Dante's willingness to put his feet up and tuck into a pizza. Virgil's design isn't dissimilar from Dante's, though it still incorporates elements that are intended to set the brothers apart and show off their opposing character traits and worldviews. The similarities? They both have pale skin, silver hair, blue eyes, and slim physiques. But their aesthetic differences come in the form of elements that the characters can control, their fashion sense. Virgil doesn't let his hair flow loose like his carefree brother, he slicks it back to maintain his calculating look. As well as that, he often opts for a classier fit. His trademark blue collared jacket is littered with intrinsic details, such as golden lining, silver and gold buttons, and strapped shoulders, a stark contrast to Dante's much simpler red leathers. Some of the features of his jacket, such as the cuffs, are so recognisable that YouTuber Maximilian Dude was able to accurately predict the character's inclusion in Devil May Cry 5 from a split second of footage when that game was announced at E3 2018. Enhance! He can break those cuffs! Yep! Look! That's Virgil. 100% Virgil. No, he said That's good Virgil. Call. That's Virgil's cuffs. Virgil confirmed. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Fucking very happy. Serpentine elements are also present throughout Virgil's ensemble, whether it's a snakeskin texture or a snake's head hanging over his coat's left shoulder. The character is clearly portraying himself as an apex predator. Despite this notable character design that lives on to this day, Virgil didn't always start out like this. Today we'll explore how his appearance has changed throughout the Devil May Cry series and decide on the one that I think ranks above the rest. You know what to do. If you like the video and want to see more videos like this, please subscribe, drop a comment and hit the notification bell. Seriously guys, look at these stats. As far as I'm concerned, subscribers are meaningless, but they do help more opportunities come the channel's way. So if you can support, it'd be very much appreciated. Virgil made his debut in the original Devil May Cry alongside his brother, technically. He first appeared as a boss character who would check in with Dante for a periodical ass whooping throughout the title. Here he had been corrupted by villain Mundus and was known as Nilo Angelo, a horned demonic knight-like figure equipped with a full set of armor and giant broadsword. Angelo is covered head to toe in body armor with a humanoid face engraved into his helmet to perhaps signify the soul trapped within. He wears a purple cape which complements the dark tones of his green and bluish armor which changes in color the more damage Dante dishes out to it. Eventually, after a number of boss battles, Angelo transforms. With this, his human face is finally revealed. The most obvious feature here is clearly the imposing glowing red eyes and pale skin, but we can also see recognizable elements from his human design such as the slick back silver hair and a clean shaven face. After his defeat, Virgil drops the perfect amulet, which would be an accessory that would become synonymous with his appearance in future titles. It's wild to think that this game was Virgil's first appearance. He really is a different entity entirely, and it's a relief that the character was revisited with the game's sequels. Nello Angelo was a fine villain, but a best design for the character? He certainly isn't. Virgil didn't appear in Dante's next adventure, taking a back seat to a new demonic foe. If you're watching this video, you likely know that Devil May Cry 3, the next sequel, was in fact a prequel. So no Nalo Angelo present here. In his place was a younger form of Virgil that existed alongside his brother Dante in a humanoid form. 
This is where Virgil really started to establish some of his own physical trademarks that warrant videos like these. His slick back hair is altered slightly from his previous appearance, looking slightly spikier, messier, and a bit unhinged. He also rocks his trademark blue jacket for the first time. Remember that perfect amulet that Angelo dropped in the previous game? This turns up in the character iteration too, for a lovely slice of continuity, though it's cutscene only as it doesn't appear on his character model. Speaking of models, to hammer in the point of Brotherhood in game, Virgil and Dante would both be presented with the same face model. I guess they really are twins or perhaps a result of the modelers working smart. As a little extra, Virgil was unlockable and playable in this game via his corrupted form, with Nalo Angelo making another appearance as his devil trigger. A very cool nod to the original game. I imagine to many people DMC3 will be many people's best or favourite design for Virgil, and it's not hard to see why. Dante's character design was one of the standout most popular elements of the Devil May Cry series at this point, and the inclusion of a shonen anime style villainous brother to mirror this was an obvious success for the series. Two Dantes are far more enjoyable than one. DMC4 followed up 3 by returning to the sequel format, directly following up the events of DMC2. While the game continued the story and included elements that referenced Virgil, it still didn't feature the return of him as a character. Virgil is largely referenced by the inclusion of his trademark sword the Yamato, which he has used as his key weapon across the franchise. In this story, series newcomer Nero finds and restores the Yamato upon his own adventure, eventually storing it within his Devilbringer arm towards the game's end. While not present in the game itself, Virgil did make an appearance as a playable character in the game's special edition re-release. Here, he very much did look like the same character that was present in DMC3, with a whole console generation of character model improvements. Honestly, uh, in the current day, it doesn't look like that much of a graphical leap. Subtle changes to the coattails of his jacket were made, but side by side looking at his official render, you can see for yourself just how faithful this showcase of his character was to what DMC3 had established. Given that he isn't part of the canonical story, it makes sense that he wouldn't get a major design overhaul. DMC4 would have an absolutely incredible follow-up, but not before a new canon decided to throw itself into the mix. I'm sure a lot of people have been eagerly anticipating Virgil's next look from a game that is remembered for its disastrous design consequences. Of course we have to mention it, who would I be if I didn't? Virgil would make his return in the series New Reimagining, a reboot titled DMC Devil May Cry? <sighs> I feel like public opinion on this game may have changed at least ever so slightly since my last Devil May Cry videos, in that some people can at least judge the game for what it was and what it wasn't. A solid action game by Ninja Theory that presented a tone and style that many fans simply weren't looking for in their Devil May Cry world. Fair enough. For that reason, I'm interested to hear current opinions on this design now that time has passed, so do let me know in the comments section. I've gone on record in the past saying that I think Dante's rebooted design is actually pretty good. It wasn't needed though, and came at the completely wrong time. It was a drastic change that we weren't ready to swallow, but despite this, Virgil's reimagining felt much more faithful. Shockingly, his design drew clear inspiration from his previous DMC3 counterpart via his general appearance and wardrobe. For starters, he retained his silver hair that he was known for. That's probably the biggest tick box check, to be honest. His biggest focal feature is not too dissimilar from his previous outfit, a long-tailed black coat. Despite the darker tone, blue is still used within the palette of the jacket. Blue is also featured in a pair of gloves and his dark blue suit star trousers. The look is topped off with a small pair of black leather shoes. The basic elements of the outfit aren't the only places where Virgil bears some striking similarities to previous interpretations. When corrupted, the character looks a lot like corrupt Virgil from DMC3, with paled, veiny skin, loss of his pupils, and bright lights that radiate from his eyes. This really does feel like a somewhat faithful reimagining of DMC3 Virgil against the backdrop of a new world that they had created. I like the design, but also find it unmemorable. It's like classic Virgil toned down to fit a perceived more contemporary archetype. 
Despite some clear influences, there was one design addition to Virgil that eclipsed any goodwill most of the fanbase had. A true marketeer's nightmare. In a game that was wildly being criticised for trying too hard to be edgy, Virgil turned up in-game wearing what appears to be a fedora, a hat synonymous with Webster's Dictionary's edgy internet neckbeard. You really can't make this up. Partnered with the backlash that the game had already received from Dante's redesign, this was a change that seemingly was easy enough for Ninja Fury to fix, as Virgil's hat was removed from the game in an update. Ironically, I don't actually think this is a fedora that Virgil is wearing, but that's the trouble with internet and poor decisions. The second this gets called a fedora once, it's a fedora for good. Following up the rebooted DMC, we've discussed it to death. Devil May Cry 5 re-emerged as a saviour of the franchise to the hardcore fanbase. We had the return of the leading man in Dante and the prodigal son, quite literally in Virgil's case, in Nero. Who better to top off the trio than Virgil re-emerging as the game's main villain and without a fedora, allegedly, in sight. Despite successful guesses by big brain YouTubers, by all accounts and purposes, Virgil's appearance in Devil May Cry 5 was a surprise, with demonic villain Urizen seemingly taking that lead villain role. In-game flashbacks would reveal earlier in the story that a weak, hooded man attacked Nero, stealing the Yamato, disappearing into a portal, and setting most of the game's events into motion. It would eventually be revealed that, shock horror, this was Virgil, who would go on to use the Yamato to remove all of his humanity entirely. The result of this split Virgil in half, leaving two brand new characters in his place. The bad half, Urizen. Urizen is an extraction of Virgil's demonic nature and strength. He is a humanoid monstrosity littered with root-like layers of purple, pink and red flesh and towering over the game's protagonists as a colossal demonic being. Evolving throughout the story, he later morphs into a large blue demonic humanoid with eyes dotted all over his body. Honestly, to the Zelda fans, to me, he really does feel like Majora's Wrath upgraded to the highest fidelity. His repulsiveness, imposing stature, and Goliath-like body, made up of sharp, angular shapes, hammers in just how dangerous he is. Now for the good half, V. V is an extraction of Virgil's humanity and the weaknesses that Virgil believes plagues him. This weakness is reflected via his character design. He is skinny, pale, and relatively unthreatening at a glance, walking with a cane. He has dark hair, his upper body is covered in tattoos, and he wears a long open leather coat and sandals. Sandals? They really did want to hammer in how threatening he felt, didn't they? Give him some Crocs. Product placement right there. Like Urizen, V doesn't really evoke much of Virgil's established design characteristics. However, when activated in his Devil Trigger-like state, his hair reverts back to Virgil's trademark silver. These characters are distinctly different but could not stay apart for too long, eventually coming back together for the game's penultimate conclusion and reformation of the character we love and know so well. Virgil was back, and it was awesome to see the Alpha and Omega at such high fidelity. In DMC5, Virgil returns to his human form once again, and rendered in the RE engine, it's a really impressive sight. Again, building on the looks that were used in DMC 3 and 4, this Virgil maintains a lot of similarities whilst adding a new level of realism and style that the engine allows, just like Dante and Nero in the same title. There are minor updates for the first time. For a start, like his brother Dante, he is visibly older, though to further set him apart from his somewhat grizzled, unshaved brother, Virgil continues to keep up appearances with a clean-shaven look. His colour palette has also been altered, his jacket is now black with three tattered coattails, with the blue now being reserved for serpentine patterns throughout. The rest of his outfit, the fingerless gloves, trousers and boots, are now charcoal grey, but the blue returns in the form of a buttoned vest to create an outfit and model that is very reminiscent of the previous design, but darker, broodier, and giving off more epic final boss energy. Now, I don't want to become predictable, as I'm noticing across many of my Capcom-themed videos that I'm often absolutely smitten with character designs from their modern gaming outputs. 
But sorry guys, I think for me it's obvious, but RE Engine has won out again. Devil May Cry 5's Virgil is utterly brilliantly designed. Alongside two perfect iterations of Dante and Nero, Virgil's interpretation is reminiscent of the past, with just enough modern polish to capture your nostalgia, whilst presenting something that looked better than it ever did before. He looks like classic Virgil, but older, wiser, and more threatening. The perfect fit for a game where returning to its roots was clearly its defining undertone. A lot of what I love about him most is his facial expressions. The leap in technology and the capabilities of the engine allow the character to truly express his characteristics in a way that he hadn't really done before, making him feel like an unpredictable, cold and calculating threat to Dante and Nero, with this level of smugness and arrogance that is simply perfect for a villain like him. I love the subtle changes made to darken the palette of his outfit, subduing his colourful design but still thrown back to his design origins. When you factor in the extra elements too, such as V and Urizen being an extension of the character, along with throwbacks and continuity to how he looked at the end of DMC1, it's hard to not really appreciate what feels like the ultimate Virgil recreation. So that's it from me today and boy oh boy am I happy to finally release this video. I'm sorry it took so long. Personal struggles and my own self-doubt has truly got the better of me over the past two years. For those of you still here watching the channel, thank you for your patience and to those of you who are new, thanks for stopping by. We've got one hell of a ride in store for the future, we've got tons of episodes planned such as exploring the character designs of Geralt from the Witcher series along with another Capcom classic in Mega Man, but there are tons of episodes planned which I'm sure will be released in a completely nonsensical order. These episodes take a huge amount of research, writing, editing, and most importantly, time. It's been hard to juggle on top of full-time work. If you're keen to see more, please consider donating on Patreon. It will go directly towards improving the channel. You'll see what it's gone into so far in the form of the channel redesign and logo. The hope is that if I'm able to use Patreon to help outsource some levels of the editing process, I'm hoping we can hopefully get to a point with much more regular content. I've been the artist Mark Flynn, thank you very much, and I'll see you all soon.